Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I paid a visit to Blackstone Laboratories in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That is a oil analysis facility that you can send a sample of your engine oil to to get a report back as to the condition of the oil, specifically the condition of the engine of your car. So if you're suspecting any abnormal things going on inside your engine or you want to know the condition of your oil, your fuel injection system, and other parts that's connected to your engine, contact them, get an oil analysis kit, get that oil sample, and it will show you what's going on with your car engine and that may help you make decisions as to what kind of maintenance, repairs, or even give you a life expectancy of that vehicle's engine. You don't want to put a bunch of money into a vehicle only to learn that it has a failing crank or some other internal parts of the engine is failing. It will also let you know if you have leaking fuel injectors, uh, leaking head gasket, and other things like that. So go to the website, get yourself a kit, send it in, have the oil sample, and have the knowledge of what kind of condition that car is running at. Kicked off the day, jumped on the highway, on my way to Kalamazoo. Got a little surprise, I'm about to make a pit stop here, and uh, drove all the way from Albuquerque to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And here we are, folks, turning right on Pettit, and we should be here at the facility. Let's see if this is it. Here it is, folks. Blackstone Laboratories, founded 1985. Let's go in and find out what this is all about from the horse's mouth, or from Ryan's mouth. Blackstone Laboratories. Kind of looks like a headstone. But here's the entrance. Let's go in. Come in here to the entrance. Very few people have a need to come here because you just need to send your sample in. If you want to have your oil sample, which I highly advise you do, you uh, go to their website. It's blackstone-labs.com yep. and go to the uh, oil sample kit. You get the sample kit in, and during your next oil change, you capture some of that oil, you put it into the container they provide for you. Yes, you can mail it through the U.S. Postal Service. It is an authorized shipping container, and the sample comes in, and it arrives in the next room that we're going to see. Here's the website, blackstone-labs.com. When you get to the home page, go all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see a link that says free test kit. You click on that. You fill out that form. And they will mail you a test kit for you to return to them to get your test results. He said the samples come in here? <laughs> yep. Yep. We get them in through the mail, UPS, FedEx. This is a UPS ground that came in. Okay. This is some stuff that's has yet to be unpacked. All right. um, when they get unpacked, the first thing we do is we sort them all out. Okay. Um, we run everything here except aircraft. Aircraft are run around the other around the corner in a different building. Okay. So how much percent of your uh, samples you think are automotive, car, passenger vehicles type? Probably sixty percent. Sixty percent are people. And then how about tractor trailer type stuff? That's included in there. That's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, gas and diesel samples like that. Okay. So we got probably a little bit more um, uh, gasoline engine automotive type work than diesel engines. Okay. There's a lot of diesel work. You guys do much transmission fluid sampling? Yeah. Yeah, we do uh, um, a fair amount. There's probably, I don't know what the percentage is on that. All, so, all right. on a daily basis. All right, so you think people should have their transmission fluid sample every 50 or 100,000 miles, or what do you think, or just when they suspect they have an issues? 
you know, it's uh, it's not a bad idea to get a baseline before you have a problem. Okay. Just so you kind of know what it looks like. Um, I don't know that you necessarily have to do it every every certain amount of time. You know, if you got them, the transmission flows can generally go a long time. So if you sample them uh, between at 50 or 100, those are a good spots okay. to do it. I try to get my oil sample every 50,000. That's because I'm racking those miles up fast. I do between 35 and 40,000 uh, miles a year in my car. So I try to get it sampled every 50,000 and every 100,000. I try to do, it's called the, is it the TBN? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, total base number. Yeah, I do the TBN, and that kind of lets me know if I'm changing my oil frequent enough or if I can extend that a little bit. Now, my TBN number has been coming in great because I was leaking so much oil. So I was doing my oil changes every 10,000 miles. That's saving me money instead of doing it every 5,000 miles as recommended by the owner's manual. But again, I was losing about a quart every 1,500 miles, and recently I was losing a quart every 1,000 miles. So I just rebuilt my cylinder head. I'm probably going to be losing a quart every 3,000. So I'm going to pull that uh, oil change interval in. I'm going to go three changes, and then I'm going to do another sample with a TBN to see if I should be doing every five or if I can extend it out to eight or so. So Ryan just told me that after they sort the samples, uh, make sure all of the requests, uh, the customers are in their computer system. They run about 36 samples at a time, and they're running about 10 or 11 runs a day, which basically means you're running over 360 samples or so a day. So these people are very experienced. They know what they're doing. And I'm going to have him go over a sample uh, report for us. But I've run a few samples on my vehicle. So when I get a new sample back, it has a fresh column for the current sample. And it shows my previous samples so that I can do a comparison of how my engine is holding up. Now, I, I did a sample the last time I reported uh, my video was about 300,000 and that sample still yielded relatively good results. Uh, my buddy Chris Fix, I call him my buddy because he's a, also a YouTuber, he did a sample at close to 300 on his van and man, you know, I, I, I would just pull the key out of that thing and shut that down. <laughs> Around here. Man, you know, you, you, you don't get paid no more for having more space. That's for sure. So, so we do four okay. main tests on the oil uh, for our standard analysis. We do a spectral exam, which is this machine that tells us the elements are in there. Okay. Metals, additives, contaminants, all in the part per million range. Yeah, that's what I was telling people that it's good to know what is getting mixed into your oil because that tells the test will tell you what items are wearing down in the in the inside the engine the internals. Exactly. Okay. So um, we've got two machines. This is an older model. This is a newer model. Um, they both do the same thing and are made by the same company. So. Now, can I buy one of those and set it up in my garage? Absolutely. Yep. yep. Seventy thousand. Okay. Get the source argon. It's it'd be cheaper gold. for me to send it here. Yeah. In the bottom. Typically, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. So we do. Uh, we also do a couple physical testing on the oil. We do a viscosity, which is this machine right here, kinematic viscosity that tells us the thickness of an oil. Okay, uh, so my car owner's manual has a recommendation of the viscosity I should be using, and as my oil ages, it may typically thicken, mm -hmm. and that's not good for the engine because if it's getting too thick, it may cause wear in certain items starting to break down and oxidize heavily when it's thicker. Okay, so I don't want my oil thicker. I want to keep the viscosity within the range. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's a that comes out on every report yep. that you do? Yep, that's part of the standard to identifying oils. We get samples on occasion where people don't know what type of oil they have, so viscosity helps us identify oh, okay. it. So they'll have a drum or something. Yeah, I've actually been driving around with a couple samples in my car. I'll probably fill out the slips before I leave. And I don't know what the oil was in it. I bought the car, I took the sample, and then I uh, replaced the oil with the kind that I used. So it would be interesting to see what that report looks like. Question two. One, sometimes 
viewers buy oil when it's on sale and they set it on the shelf in their garage. Is that oil going to age at all or how long can they let oil sit in their garage before they change the oil in their car? Any idea? Like they need it. Okay, so, so oil sitting in a sealed container won't go bad. Now, once you put it in your car, drive 500 miles or so, after you start using that oil, how often should you change? I actually heard a mechanic say, until you reach your oil change interval, your 5,000 miles, you can leave it sit in there, whether it's two, three, or four years. Is that not good advice? Or? Oh, no, there's there's no problem with modern engines. Uh, you can leave the oil in there longer than a year. We get that question quite often. If, if it's a classic car or something, they don't want to drive it that much. Uh -huh. It only has 500 miles. They can generally go a lot longer than a year. Okay, so, so the oil... Uh, typically it's not deteriorating so much unless it's being used and driven around. Yeah. Now, how about the oil filter? Will that oil filter start to break down and need to be changed or can you let that go a couple years as well? Um, I try to let it go without that, you know, look at the inside versus if there's too much solid present in the oil. That okay. tells you if the filter is bad or not. All right, so I've been kind of encouraging my mom to do changes once a year even though she's doing about She's doing about 1,500 miles a year, so she could probably extend that to two years or three years in without yeah. any problem. Yeah. We'd have to see samples, that for sure. Okay. Get a sample. Save yourself some hassle. Engines. So there's normal levels of solids. There's a transmission fluid right there. Okay. And it's just, uh, you know, we quantify that to see if the oil is becoming heavily oxidized, if the oil filter is not working correctly. Right. There's other problems. So. so if people are possibly using oil filters that's inadequate, that test will show them that as well. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Let's move on. So this is the area that your TBN test is done. Yep. When you bring a sample in, if you request the TBN uh, results, how much is that additional? $10. $10 additional. They'll let you know if your oil is still good, uh, how much longer you can go for your next oil change or if you should actually bring that oil change in a little uh, tighter. Now, is there any circumstances that you run into that you guys may recommend somebody change the type of oil? Because I've actually heard of uh, people with gasoline engines running diesel oil in their vehicle. You know? Um, Usually on, you know, cars and trucks, if you just stick with whatever the manufacturer recommends, you're going to be fine. And there's really very few times where we'll tell you to switch brands okay. or, or even weights, you know, because whatever they design the, that oil or that engine to run on, whatever weight of oil they design it to run on, you know it's going to do a pretty good job. Yeah. Now, I've seen some auto manufacturers, and Volvo, and I'm going to pick on them because that's who I have, I've actually seen on the oil cap where it has your recommended weight and manufacturer. And I think they do that, like say they'll recommend castor oil, because that's where they tested their engines on, and that's when they designed them on. Is that probably why they recommend uh, castor oil? Or? Probably castor oil pays money to do that. Oh, so that's not a test, it's an advertisement. Yeah, yeah, just marketing. <laughs> so they're greasing their pockets. Well, you know, it's just, just marketing. You, you can that's, say it. That's the oil thing. <laughs> Because <laughs> all oils wear about the same, you know, they have to do other stuff. Oh, really? Make them, all make right. Make them look good. Mobile okay. does that same thing as Corvettes. All right. You open up Corvette, it says use mobile one. Okay. So. Just marketing. All yeah. right, so uh, you're saying uh, several oil uh, retailers, uh, their product is competitive. Then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Any name brand oil is going to do a good job. Okay. Anything that's out there that's Penny's oil. Like your state, Gastrol, they're all good products. Yeah, now, me, I try to stick with the brand, and I use Mobile One because I can get the weight at a lot of different retailers. And then when I send in my sample, I can let these guys know what kind of oil I to uh, identify my oil and run the test on it. So that's just what I do. You can mix and match brands. That's not a bad thing to do. Uh, occasionally, if you have to, you're out and about, you're a little low on oil, 
it's not a horrible thing to even mix weights a little bit if you have to, but you rather run maybe a 1030 instead of a 530 than to run your car low on oil. So don't run your car low on oil. That's bad. So anyway, let's uh, see what else we got. Try to take a look at a report, have him explain it, and uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, here's the last report that I had done on my car that I'm currently driving. I was just about to send another sample in, but he's going to briefly go over this. And uh, here you see their little note to me, things that they have to say about the report, kind of an overview. So I'm going to let Ryan go ahead and explain other things that you may need to understand about your report. Go ahead, Ryan. So the comments are what most people, you know, really like about our report and it's because we try to go through and explain in plain English exactly what we're seeing um, you know here we go through and everything looks good and we tell you that in six lines um, if there's differences in the elements that show up we'll talk about it um, if something looks out of line we'll certainly talk about it but uh, most of the time everything looks good so we just go through and explain why it's looking good if you're interested in extended oil use we'll talk about it here in the comments as well okay so this it was an oil change at 9,000 miles, and then you recommended I could try to change it every 10,000 miles and mm -hmm. do another TBN and go from there. Yep. All right, we'll cover a couple of those points there. So the, you know, really the heart of the analysis is our, uh, the spectral exam where we go through and test all 20 different elements and uh, tell you what those are in the parts per million range. Okay. The top of the report is generally wear metals, aluminum, chrome, iron, copper, lead, tin, and nickel. Uh, silver is also a wear metal in some engines. It's not too common. But uh, most engines um, are primarily aluminum and iron anymore. Um, with a, a few copper bushings, those would be bronze bushings. Sometimes mm -hmm. bearings are lead. Uh, sometimes they're uh, aluminum now. Newer, newer engines have aluminum bearings. Mm -hmm. Chromium is a ring metal. So, so if you're having a lot of chromium, you may be having some ring wear. Yep. All right. Yep, I see wear. here. What's this uh, dark area here for? Unit location averages are your averages for the Volvo 2.3 liter turbo. Okay, so it's not those engines in general. It's my yep. averages. Yep. Okay. Uh, the, all the averages, everybody's averages, are over here on the universal average. Oh, okay. So all there. the samples we've seen from the Volvo 2.3 liter turbo are displayed here. All right. And that's another nice thing about our report is that we go through and tell you what's normal. So here's normal levels uh, after a typical oil change, and we'll tell you in the comments how long a normal oil run is. Okay. So you can compare your metals to that and see... You know, without having to know a whole lot about the engine if everything's normal or not. So the the current data is here. Then history would show up to the left, or excuse me, to the right. Um, the physical properties that we test on the oil are down here in this section. Uh, we look at things like the viscosity of the oil, the flash point. In this particular instance, the flash point was just below. It should be greater than 375, but it was right at 375. So we call that a trace of fuel. Uh, a trace of fuel is typically not anything to worry about, just something okay. that we talk about in the comments. Now, if it would go from a trace this time to 1.0 next time, and then so I, I wouldn't want time. that number to be going lower. So you I wouldn't, wouldn't want, want like a up, two. No. The fuel percentage, yeah, a trace is the minimal amount we can test. But if it goes from a trace to up to 0 0.1, up to 0 0.2, oh, okay, up to so 3. so if that number was 250, that would be better or worse? The flat, oh, the flash points you're talking about, yeah. Uh, the flash point, yes, that would be worse because the lower the flash point, the more fuel you have. Oh, okay. So, so here I had 380, and yep. down here it, it dropped to the minimum point. Mm -hmm. Okay. All so right. So this, we said no, or less than 0.5% fuel, so basically no measurable fuel at, at a flash point of 380. Here you're 375, which is just starting to show a little bit of fuel, so we called it a trace. Okay. So if you had antifreeze, we would report it here. We would see antifreeze based on the elements uh, potassium and sodium. All right, antifreeze been in your oil is a sign of a head gasket going bad, maybe or yeah, head gasket or intake crack, manifold gasket. Crack block. The, yeah, crack box possibility, especially okay. if the engine's overheated. Okay. Uh, sometimes oil coolers will give you that too. If you have uh, a problem with an oil cooler, you can okay. crack in there. So. Yeah, Volvo actually runs an oil cooler through the radiator. 
and the transmission through the other side of that radiator. Okay. So okay. I've seen transmission fluid get into the coolant system, and I guess vice versa. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't be bad to check your transmission fluid just to make mm -hmm. sure it doesn't have any coolant getting in there. Yep, yep. The element of potassium and sodium will tell you that. So Okay, so potassium and sodium is primary elements of coolant mm -hmm. mixing in your oils. Some sodium is also an additive in some oils. Uh, the okay. additives that are real common are molybdenum. Uh, boron's a pretty common additive. Okay. Sodium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. Those are all very common and at pretty high levels compared to your wear metals. You know, you uh -huh. can see those are just additives, though. Okay. The TBN down here stands for total base number, and that's a measure of the amount of active additive that's present in an oil. Uh, when an oil starts out new, the TBN reads high. This oil probably read around 6 or 7. Okay. And then as it gets used, the TBN drops. Right. When it gets down to less than 1, we consider the oil pretty much out of active additive. And okay. at that point, you'll want to change it. So when a manufacturer recommends an oil change, uh, they probably are anticipating the TBN being around 1.5 or something? Uh, yeah. You know, I really don't know what goes into the manufacturer's recommendation. Okay. Now, now, I'm if, sure there's a lot of different things involved in that. If more people, than just the TBN. If people are changing their oil every 5,000, like the owner's manual say, or 10,000, yeah. what's kind of the typical TBN number you see in a lot of reports? You know, three, three or four is pretty common. It's actually pretty okay. rare to see it read less than one. Uh, okay. Usually people change oil before that or they're... You know, we'll find excess metal and we'll recommend changing the oil, even though they might have still plenty of TBN left. Okay. We might get nervous about the amount of metal that's showing up, or if the viscosity is reading out of range. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that and use that as an indicator to change oil, not just based on the TBNs. All right, well, uh, as far as the viewers, if you have a oil life monitor in your vehicle, and that oil life monitor is under 15%, and it's recommended you change oil, Go ahead and send a sample in and let us know in the comments what your TBN numbers were so that more of the viewers can get a feel for that. So we can kind of uh, monitor that just in our comment section of this video. Mm -hmm. I'm Robert, this is Ryan at Blackstone Labs. If you want to know what's going on in the internals of your engine and possibly how your oil life is doing, Go on their website, blackstone-labs.com. I have a link in the comments section. Go to their website, order a sample kit, have your oil sample, and have a better working knowledge. And uh, education is power. You know that. And you'll know what's going on in your engine. And hey, if this report comes back too bad, that may enable you to make a decision whether you want to try to take a uh, car on a long road trip or just call the... Uh, tow truck and have it towed to the salvage yard. Either way, <laughs> you, you have that knowledge. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.